Hey everyone, first of all, Happy Easter or Happy Resurrection Day of those of religious belief like I am. And I wanted to come on here and kind of talk about the differences between episode 100 and 200 of Friendship is Magic. In case, because in case you don't know, and I'm sure you do by now because it was all over social media yesterday and even to this day, or even today as well I should say, My Little Pony Friendship is Magic celebrated 200 episodes. And that, quick note, is a huge milestone. I mean, for a series originally based on a toy franchise, and its intention, even to this day, is to sell toys and merchandise, that's a huge milestone. Because most of the time, even back during its original G1, back during its original Generation 1 G1, G1 run, I should say, it only went up to about 65 episodes, if not a bit more. The only Hasbro show at that time that, <coughs> that kind of surpassed that was Transformers Generation 1, and they hit just under 100 episodes. Or just a little under 100 episodes, I should say. But, for Friendship is Magic, a show that had the same intention, a show licensed by the same people, Hasbro, for it to surpass 100 episodes back in season 5, and now 200 episodes as of yesterday here in its final season, season 9, it's a huge milestone and it's a big, big deal. And a lot of people have been talking about it and tweeting about it. And ironically, hundreds if not thousands of people, I would say mostly over hundreds, among hundreds of people yesterday in Burlingame, California at SFO Hyatt Regency, the SFO Hyatt Regency Hotel saw the premiere of the 200th episode in a theater-like fashion, you know, to them it is a big milestone own as well because, let's be honest, when the show surpassed its 65 episode quota, which normally for any show is the norm, no one ever thought, oh, it'll hit, it'll hit 100 episodes. And all of a sudden, here, all of a sudden, season 5 comes around, and you got a 100th episode planned out. But even then, when 100 hit, nobody thought, oh, it just, it won't go beyond that. It won't even hit 200. Guess what? As of yesterday, that's exactly what it did. But what is the difference, though, between both episodes? What is the biggest difference? And I know I'm about two minutes and well, I'm about three minutes in now, so let's get to the point. Because I know some people will point that out to me. But what is the difference between both episodes? Well, back in season five, when the 100th episode uh, was aired, it was written by one person, M.A. Larson. Now, M.A. Larson has gone on to work with Lauren Faust on other projects, most notably the DC Superhero Girl series on Cartoon Network. But, M.A. Larson at the time, he, he even said this in a recent panel about two years ago, said, take a look at Slice of Life and that's how he thinks about the fandom because mostly Slice of Life was a thank you letter to the fans because what it was doing was focusing not on the main six, but on the secondary and background ponies. Ponies and pony characters that had garnered a cult following, garnered a fan base of their own just because of their name and their unique look, look and somewhat as a per and basically from what little you could tell at the time, their personalities. For example, Vinyl Scratch, aka DJ Pone 3, became huge because she made a first appearance what, around season two and her most notable in season two was in the finale, Cantalot Wedding, when Pinkie Pie pulled her up out of nowhere to help get the party started as she put it at the end of that episode. Now, besides, <coughs> besides TJ Poem 3, we also had Octavia Melody. And just by a bit of the personality and the look and the character design that she, or the character look and design she had, and a bit of the personality that she gave off, she became a cult favorite because she was more of that 
of a character that you could tell was into classical music. She really was. And then there were other ponies as well. Like, um, I don't know if it was the last roundup or what episode. I think it was the last roundup. I'm not really sure. You had the debut of Derpy, a.k.a. Muffins. And she became popular due to the fact that there was some controversy behind her character due to the name she was given and the fact that she had some kind of uh, disorder added to her personality, to her character. More of a ADHD, ADHD-like uh, disorder or Down Syndrome, whatever it was. And that got a lot of flack, uh, flack put onto Hasbro and the creative team behind the show that they decided, okay, we're going to use her again. We can keep the look and the design, but we've got to change up the name and not make her look so, you know, out of it or anything like that. So, that's what the, so, that, so that was the need for the name change. True, they kept a little bit of her personality quirks that people were used to seeing, but they decided to basically switch it up just a bit so they would avoid any uh, trouble behind the scenes, or any more trouble. So, anyways, with all that said, and you had uh, Time Turner, which became the Doc, which, is, which was the show's interpretation of Doctor Who, he was known as Doctor Hooves. You had a pony version of Rose, who was part of the Flower Ponies. You had all sorts of things in there. A lot of pandering, if you will, for the fans when it came to these background characters as well as some of the secondary characters. For example, you had a scene with the princesses arguing over the fact that one of them forgot to bring the wedding gift. And then you, had, you saw a different side of shining armor because he, as Caden puts it, always cries at weddings. Surprised he didn't quite cry at his own. But you, <coughs> you get the point. You get the point that I'm saying. Slice of Life, what I'm trying to point out, was more of a thank you letter to the fans. That's why it was so over with the fans. That's why M.A. Larson added in certain moments from scenes and from what scenes he wrote to be like what? To certain moments you would see on screen. I mean, they had Gummy, Pinkie Pie's pet alligator, monologuing, which really threw a lot of people off course. Which really, like, was a WTF moment to them. Like, what the heck is this? But then on top of, but then even before that, when you have this little, like, flashing montage uh, going on before that happens, if you go into slow motion, rewinding it, and you slow mo and you put, like I said, you put it into slow motion, this is one screenshot, it goes by real quick, but if you pause it, put it in slow motion, it's a group of the staff members, obviously the staff members, wearing horse heads, heads on their head. Horse, you know, heads on their head. They're basically in horse costumes. Basically, it's just, you know, the, you know those masquerade masks, horse masks and all that? That's what they have on their heads. And like I said, you gotta, it's a, it goes by real quick, but as soon as you see it, it's not animated either, it's live action. So that's why Slice of Life, in the, end, in the end of it, you know, when you get down to it, is so beloved. Why it was done in the way it was. It was, thank, it was a silly, it was a silly self-aware episode out that was a thank you letter to the fans because it was focusing on certain characters, backgrounds, and secondary characters that don't really get enough shine, as well, well as it was basically utilizing a lot of fan ideas that fans would always interpretate to be associated with these characters. I mean, you even had the whole thing with Lyra and Bon Bon, where basically they acknowledged, oh, Bon Bon's Sweetie Drop's name you know, Sweetie Jobs is her real name, and Bon Bon's just another cover name. And it kind of made sense to a lot of fans why she would appear in certain sections of the show and sometimes have a different accent. You kind of get the idea, right? But anyway, that's why Slice of Life was so beloved and enjoyed, even to this day, by fans, by viewers, because it was a thank you letter to the fans by M.A. Larson, who when he was still on the show. But now, you fast forward four seasons later here to season nine, and we get to 200, and the difference between it 
and 100 is just like 100 was a thank you letter to the fans, 200 was a thank you letter to the voice actresses. And to me, whether you agree with it or not, I think it's a great idea to do something like that. Doesn't matter what show you are, or doesn't matter what show uh, you're a fan of or you work on. You gotta give recognition to those that help bring these characters to life. And this show did that because background on this, the background on this is back in 2017, it was around season 7, I believe, I think towards the end of season 7, I'm not really sure. They talked, or I think it was in the middle of season 7, during a hiatus, but they talked with all the voice actresses uh, but, you know, behind the characters, from Tara Strong as Twilight, Tabitha St. Germain as Luna, as Rarity and Luna, or oh, mostly Rarity, a Andrea Limbrin, uh, Andrea, and Andrea Limbrin as Pinkie Pie and Fluttershy, Ashley Ball as Rainbow Dash and Applejack, Cassie Westlock as Spike, you know, basically Josh Haber and Nicole Dubuque, Dubu uh, basically sat down with them and said, look, and I'm sure Stephen Davis was with, the, with them as well, because Stephen Davis and Nicole Dubuque are the executive producers. Megan McCarthy is now a co-executive producer. But anyway, they sat down with them in a meeting, Tara Strong via Skype, and they asked them basically, what is the one thing you've always wanted your character to do that has not been done yet? What is the one thing you always imagined them to do? And they gave them all these different ideas that, as you saw in the saw in the episode, were utilized. They were utilized, and it was great. And when you think about it, I should say, what I'm trying to say is, when you think about it, it might seem like it could not mesh well, not work well, but it worked out fantastic. In the end, it worked out great because it, you had all these funny moments. You had all these, sorry, I had to do something there, but you had all these unique and funny moments. I mean, the way it played to its strength, I mean, the way it was done, it played to the strength of all these ideas the ladies gave. It played to the strengths things, of what they wanted the characters to finally do and have. You know, Ashley Ball coming up with the idea for Applejack to have this personality, alter ego of a country singer that I still look at as being a freaking reference and tribute to Dale Evans of Roy Rogers and Dale Evans fame. You know, Rainbow Dash dressing up and basically being freaking, becoming freaking Megara, Meg from Disney's Hercules to distract Zephyr Breeze. Ashley Ball came up with some good ideas for those two characters. Tell us this ain't Germain coming up with the idea for Rarity to kind of take command take charge of the plan because, as I said in my review, Shining Armor, almost immediately after Twilight says what the plan is going to be, sends a letter and basically spoils Twilight by acknowledging, I know what your plan is. I know what your plan is going to be. I know what you're going to do. It's too predictable. So, so Tabitha suggested in her idea, Rarity takes charge. Rarity comes up with a plan. I mean, all these things all these ideas were utilized, even if they were utilized in little fantasy moments, they were utilized. Cassidy Westluck came up with probably the best idea in the eyes of a lot of fans. Basically give Spike his moment. Make him be acknowledged as being the little brother Shining Armor and mostly Twilight have always had. This, this right here by Cassidy was a good move because everybody was always wondering, okay, what is Twilight to Spike? Is he her son? Is he her brother? What is it? And this episode, and it isn't canon, believe it or not, it isn't within continuity, a little bit, most of it is, I think, acknowledges that Spike is Twilight's little brother, or her younger brother. Basically, they grew up together. So, there you go. And that might answer a freaking lot of questions when it comes to Spike and Rarity. It's like, okay, he's young, but how much younger is he? I don't know. And this kind of shows Spike's a lot smarter than he looks because he was able 
little bit of spoilers in case you haven't seen the episode yet, was able to come up with a contingency plan, a twist, or kind of put a wrench in both Shining Armor and Twilight's plans because he's the one that came up with the idea to kind of surprise everybody at the end and reveal he had colluded or had a collusion with Luna to kind of get the crown because Luna, and you gotta tell, and you gotta be honest, Tabitha also had ideas for Luna in this episode, did not like how the security measures, this new security system was going to work because she saw the flaws and Spike basically noticing that Luna did not agree with this, realized, hmm, I see opportunity, there you go. So Tabitha St. Germain struck gold twice with her idea for Rarity and Luna. Cassie Westler struck gold with making sure Spike got his moment. And Andrea Lindgren came up with some good ideas. Pinky wanted to, re Pinky revealing she wants to go into space so she could be the eye in the sky. Fluttershy being a super badass spy. Excuse my language, God, on your day. Excuse my language, Lord, on your day. But be a B A B dot A dot, you know, a spy and have that little fantasy there. I mean, everything just worked. All the ideas they came up with, this worked out so, so well. And I think, I think it was Tara that came up with the idea for Shining Armor and Twilight to have the sibling rivalry. He, that focused on the winner always, the winner getting this crown for about a week or something, becoming sibling supreme or whatever. So, Overall, when you look at the ideas that was utilized here and compared to the ideas that was utilized in 100, again, both episodes are looked at as thank you letters. That's the one similarity and identical similarity they have. The difference is, is 100, when it was written by M.A. Larson, was a thank you letter to the fans, and that's why it was presented the way it was. That's why you had the moments and the acknowledgments and everything that you did there. 200 was a thank you letter to the voice actresses for staying with the show as long as they did and bringing life to these characters. Not many voice actors or voice actresses want to stay on one series for so long like these ladies did, but that's what happened. And on top of that, they got a credit at the beginning of this episode when it said Sparkle 7, underneath it said Story By, and here you had the names of Tara Strong. Tabitha St. Germain, Andrea Limbrin, Ashley Ball, Kathy Westluck. It was just, it was just a great way to give, to me, to give one final bow, one final nod to, of respect and love to the women behind the scenes. And that, I think, is worth it. And to me, a lot of shows that run as long as, let's say, MLP has, if they're animated, they need to do that with their cast as well. They need to find a way to thank their cast for providing the voices of those characters. And this is a good way, in my opinion, to go about it. Take note of what MLP, the MLP staff did here with Sparkle 7, episode 200. So in the end, both episodes are good. Both episodes are great. Some are even saying 200. Some are even saying, from what I've read, and heard, some are saying 200 surpasses 100. Some are saying both are dead even as being great thank you letters and milestone episodes. Some are saying 100 is still better than 2. Everybody's going to have their differences. But overall, they will agree that both are great. But I, will, but I do believe this. I do believe this. A lot of people will agree both episodes served their purpose, did what they had to do, and gave the respect and acknowledgement and the thankfulness to those that helped make the series what it is today. So, similarities, the both thank you letters. Differences, one's a thank you letter to the voice actresses for being with the series for as long as it has and bringing life to these main seven characters as well as other characters as well. And 100 was basically a thank you letter to the fans for getting the show as far as it was at that time, or to that point. So, overall, both are great episodes, both are rewatchable, 
you can watch multiple times and still get a kick out of them. I mean, heck, like I said in my video before this, I, re I used Windows DVD Maker to basically burn a copy of 100, 200, and Best Gift Ever into an MLP compilation DVD after I, well, used the links from Daily Motion to uh, download them, on, after I copied the links off Daily Motion to paste onto savevideo.me and then download them so I could do so. But overall, that's all I'm going to say. Similar, as the similarity, like I said, both are thank yous. Differences, one's a thank you letter to the actresses, one is a thank you letter to the fans. And though and what I said in this video are the reason are the various reasons why. So let me know what you guys all think down below, comment if you like. Hope you all have a great happy Easter and happy Resurrection Day, and I will talk to y'all later.